my name is Alexis Carey. I'm Matthew Sudsbury. And I'm Martina Smilton. And, and you're, you're watching, watching The Blender, Blender 2.0. Spring break to some doesn't exist, but to everyone in college, it's the national holiday. Students are known to take trips to Cancun, Miami, Myrtle Beach, and the list goes on and on. I have a question for you all. What is one of your dream vacations that you want to go to in the My future? dream spring break. I want to go to Miami. I see a yeah. lot of videos on like Barstool and all that. I'm like, mm -hmm. man, that looks like a great time. So that's, that's easily. Why, why do you want to go to Miami other than, you know, seeing those things um, on TV? I feel like I just, I feel like the most people, like out of everybody that I know personally goes to Miami. So it's more of like a social thing that I'm connected to. Um, a lot of friends who go to other colleges go there, even though they're on a different spring break because they don't go in this state because I'm not from the state. Mm -hmm. um, so just knowing like them and where they're going is why I want to go to Miami because I know a lot of people who, again, like went this year. And I'm like, so, that'd be fun to go with them. Okay. So what about you, Alexis? Hmm. If I had the opportunity, I would want to get in a van with my boyfriend and go travel to California for a week. Well, you got a lot of road to cover. Yeah, but look, for me, you got a lot of stuff to do along the way. For me, I would love to go. Let's let's go through the um, travel book. Yeah. Um, I would love to go to Texas. Texas? Yes, Where Texas. Texas. And a lot of people say, why when you say Texas? Because I never really had a chance. I, I've been down south before, mm -hmm. but I never been, I never had the chance to actually go down south and just take a whole week to actually look at a lot of historical things. I'm one of them people. I love historical uh, documents. I love historical sites. I love anything historic. I love it. So. Okay. You need um, to go to New Orleans then. Or Memphis or something like Tennessee. New Orleans hey, is the bomb. Do it. Yes, I, I got to go there. So I'm going down south for a historic um, tour. <laughs> Anything specific you'd want to see? Uh, I really would like to go to the Lorraine Motel. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. what's special about that? Oh, well, the Lorraine Motel is where uh, Dr. King passed away oh, or, okay. and was okay. assassinated. All so, right. Oh, yes. that it's would a be museum very interesting now. to go. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, you want to move on? Yeah, for sure. Marvel Studios was bought out by the Walt Disney Company in 2009. Since then, Marvel has expanded the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or MCU, to heights only NASA could reach. With its recent success with the Black Panther and its 10-year anticipation, we can expect that Marvel's Avengers Infinity Wars will be a showstopper. Guys, how important is the Marvel Cinematic Universe um, to our generation? I grew up with a dad that still has all of his Spider-Man comics from yeah. when he was a kid. So Marvel for me is like, if you're a DC fan in my house, oh, yeah? you are the black sheep. So I don't know. I think Marvel Cinematic Universe to our generation is like what we know is superheroes. Right. You know, like the people, yes. like our parents grew up with the comics predominantly right. and yeah. then like the cartoonified TV shows, like... You know, yeah. all those different stuff. But but to us, like, we know the, like, who's, like, who plays Spider-Man right. and who plays Superman and who plays, you know, all the different superheroes. And, like, I don't know. It's just, like, part of your childhood that's, like, like yeah. there and, like, you keep it, you know? Well, for, for me, um, I just started to, I guess, learn about Marvel. I didn't know anything about Marvel. You know, I knew about Spider-Man. I knew about Superman because, you know, it was always advertised during Hall uh, Halloween. But I... Superman, hold on. We'll pause in a second. Superman is DC, though, right? Is Correct. He? I always get those confused. But, yeah. Because mm -hmm. you got the two universes, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But... Black Panther, you know, the movie, that's the only time, like, I found out that that was a Marvel c character, you know. Mm -hmm. Actually, listen, this is a true story. I w when my friend said, let's go see Black Panther, I thought she was actually talking about, like, the Black Panthers, you yeah, know, the like, movement, like, yeah. you know. I'm like, oh, they have a historical movie out. I went, and it said Marvel. I said to myself, are we in the right field? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we? You know, like, but it turned out to be a good movie and everything. And I, I, I guess that's where my Marvel interest has came from now. I'm yeah. ready to see some more. Yeah, what's cool is, too, is um, so there's part one and part two of the Infinity Wars that are coming out. And then this will, and then the sequel to Spider-Man Homecoming will conclude the 22 movie arc that they started, which is pretty cool that they've done 22 movies from 
whatever. And then they're going to start phase two, which is the next like 22 movies of Marvel. So they're not going away anytime soon. So on the bright side, you have at least 22 more movies to look forward to. So a question for you. How much do you think Marvel makes on how much do you think Marvel has made on all of their films put together in the last? Oh my too much. God. Billions and billions. billions. But they spend billions of dollars too to make them. Yeah. Because you know, they, I think they said it, they spent like $2 million just to make Black Panther. My final question before we go to commercial DC mm -hmm. or Marvel? Um, I'm more of a DC guy because um, I, like, mm -hmm. I like people. That's why, again, to loop back to last week, that's why I like. Um, mobster movie a lot because you see mobsters as like people instead of just like Italian guys stabbing guys, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, I like I like the humanization of people and DC deals with superheroes being human beings. Batman's my like favorite. I was the black sheep instead of the family. Of being so that brings me to my next question. How, um, you know, the Will Smith movie with them being oars yeah. and all yeah, those different type of things, it. would that be considered a DC? Um, no, because that's no. a Netflix original, um, so it's not Marvel DC and Marvel DC. are the two. But the concept, yeah, is yeah, that it, the same? Yeah, it's a, like a. Being human characters. I or guess, yeah. 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 If it was under one of those companies, it would probably Marvel be Marvel and DC, DC are like just two comic book companies that own yeah. all the people. E.T. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's like ET. What? <laughs> All right. Well, we'll be right back after this commercial break. Video One Media Services provides accomplished students the opportunity to enhance their college experience by working with real-world clients. In addition, we provide clients local and affordable video options to better enhance their media needs. For more information on how Video One Media Services can help you with your next media project, email or call our office at 262-472-5659. Warhawks know what it takes to become champions. At the University of Wisconsin-Whitewater, our student-athletes pursue excellence with a determination that inspires everyone on campus. Warhawks are smart. Warhawks are strong. Warhawks value service. We prepare our student-athletes for life after college. The University of Wisconsin-Whitewater. Come be part of the Warhawk family. The University Center at UW-Whitewater is here to enhance the campus experience. Today, we're going to find out how the UC gets you connected. The UC gets me connected by providing a great place for me to study. The UC really gets me connected through the different offerings it has between the uh, Warhawk Connection Center, so Impact, SAO. The UC gets me connected by giving me a great place to socialize with friends. UC gets me connected by uh, meeting new people, playing pool, bowling. The UC gets me connected by providing us with charging stations for our phones. The UC gets me connected thanks to all the wonderful food selections. Gets me connected to my next meal. I come to the UC to meet with Spanish Club. I come to the UC because it's a great place to study. I come to the UC to uh, get some homework done. My fraternity is always sitting here and they help me and support me to make sure my grades are as high as they can be. I come to the UC to meet with student orgs. Remember Warhawks, UC is here to get you connected. Social networks are important to our generation, our, our generation's development socially and economically. Networks are allowing people to be paid for their online personas. So guys, how do you think social media influences our future in terms of employment? I'll just fire off my quick thing because I know that you have a lot to say. I do have said so much to break. say about this. Um, yes. I think that uh. social media is kind of the wild west right now. Like you can literally post anything you want with mm -hmm. relatively little repercussion so you yeah. really need to be careful on what you post and who sees what and you really make gotta make sure everything's on private because if you post something somebody down the line will google you and they'll see it and then you won't get a job you better say that because it has happened several times to several individuals and they have not only 
um, damage their career or their potential starting career, but mm -hmm. they have um, that goes through the industry real quick. Yeah. You know, it goes from one employer to the next. Like, did you see what she did on Facebook? She lifted her leg. What? What? And then, <laughs> and then, and then it just goes through, and then you become a person that's known for what they do. Yeah, I, I actually interpreted the question different, but like actually on the on the topic that you guys are talking about. There was a mayoral candidate from where I'm from. I'm from Rockford, Illinois, and he is um, maybe like two or three years older than me. He's in his early 20s, and he's running for mayor. But like everybody was like freaking yeah. out. Everybody was freaking out because of all the stuff that he had posted in college on his on his, all the social media stuff. So he got completely tore apart, and he had no hope on that. I like beer. <laughs> but the way I interpreted this question was: How is social media going to influence our firm, um, like in terms of employment, like as in jobs? Like that's what I was thinking about. Like. What kind of job opportunities is it gonna? Because people are getting paid for just their online personas now. Yeah. So, but actually, for me, this is really important because this is something I want to go into. I want to be a digital content creator when I leave college. So I, I'm really, and it's funny because everybody I'm talking to is like, you know, what do you want to do when you graduate? And I said, you know, I want to work on the digital platforms, the forums, and create content. And they're like, you know, this is a very upward moving thing to really invest your time into. So I think that it's going to open up a whole new world of things to be employed What kind for. of content do you want to create? Um, videos, graphics, stuff like that. Um, it could be either branding stuff. I, I like to do more creative stuff. I want to do something more like like BuzzFeed related. Okay. You know, like yeah. creative content. Okay, but on a on a on a positive note, you know, we talked about the downfall of social media and posting, but one of the advantages to social media and posting would be um, there's now groups like there's like little groups like one is like Milwaukee gigs or something like that and employers they like post yeah openings for jobs in there and people who are looking for a job that have um, subscribe to the group has an opportunity to get instant notifications about you know job openings and everything and I think uh, that's an advancement for individuals who are looking for a job as I well. I also think too though, even like from yours and mine perspective, because we both own our own businesses, it, it makes it easier to own your own business nowadays. Yes, because you have free true. publicity, free promotion, and yeah. if you want to go more than that, it's like two or three bucks to promote your stuff online. And, it, and it's a far distance too. Yeah, they'll, uh, they'll span it all the way across the country. Yeah. Give so. them $100, you, you touch Mexico. <laughs> 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 all right, you want to move on? Yes. So, Fortnite is an online survival video game that has taken the nation by storm. Taken tasked with surviving a free for all versus 100 players. The player must either team up with other friends and battle or survive alone until the last man stands. What are your opinions on video games and the new social gatherings they have? I love it. Um, my love from Fortnite aside, because I think it's, it's... You say that because you're a video game. Yeah. I am. Um, no, I really, I really like that I can every night get on and play with... Um, like my best friend, he lives like two and a half hours away. And every single night I can like sit down and I can hear his voice and I can talk to him and I can spend time and we can both do something we both enjoy because we have Fortnite. Like literally, it's not even like we play Fortnite every single night. Um, same with anybody. Like if you have a group of friends that say one lives in California, one lives in Maine, one lives in Texas, one lives in Montana where nobody lives, that you can actually like all hang out together for hours at a time and you can all do something you enjoy and you can build a friend group. Okay, I, so I that's, that. that's even leaving so, out the friends that you make in that yeah, cool yeah. atmosphere themselves. And okay, so it talked about surviving. Uh, what are you all surviving? And like, are you surviving? Trying to survive from zombies? What are um, what what are Fortnite you? Fortnite is like uh, it's like the Hunger Games. Like, because oh, I never. Yeah. I, I'm like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah. Okay. You jump out of an airplane yeah. and like you land and you don't you have nothing but like a pickaxe and you, you there's like guns and bandages and you're like, oh, in that building I can get like this gun and then you have a gun now and you're like, oh, I don't have any bullets and then you can find bullets and then somebody else can find like a machine gun and you're like, oh, that guy has a machine gun. We gotta hide from him and like try to hide. So it's pretty much the Hunger Games. You're dropped on an island and then there's a storm and it moves smaller and smaller and smaller and kind of pushes people together until you're the last person standing. So that's what the game is itself. Oh, like The Walking Dead. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> kind of. But uh, I don't know. I, growing up as a, an academic 
you know, kid in high school mm -hmm. where all of my friends were super nerdy. So it was always, <laughs> oh my god, did you play this video game? Or oh my god, did you, like, did you see what happened on like Call of Duty? Like, oh my god, the KD is so big. I was like, boys got doo -doo. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it's something that I've been surrounded with for a long time. But I guess on another on another side of that, is it affecting our ability to socialize in a physical platform? Um, I think yeah, but I think that if you are trained properly from a young age, mm -hmm. you'll yeah. be fine. Like if you're introduced like, hey, here's social cues and social mannerisms. But again, if you lock your kid in a room. See, and you're like, see that's the mm -hmm. difference. That's the difference now between uh, the new generations and I guess kind of us and the um, older generations. Yeah, you know, our between. parents kind of was like, you know, when we were little, you know, most technology was just developing, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Just and getting the internet. And we still the had a taste of um, the... Go out and play and don't come back until the lights start. Right, right. Yeah, and yeah, when right. they come on, you better be in, you know? Yeah. But now I've seen kids, babies, they have tablets. They're on yeah. their tablets. Yeah. And before they can even speak, they crying over tablets and mm -hmm. having temper tantrums. Yeah. But... Yeah, it's well, like, like, wow. going into the future knowing that they're going to, the kids nowadays don't know what it was like without computers right. and tablets and cell phones and stuff. That's just what they've grown up with. Do you, do you think that this is going to be an even bigger issue later on down the road? Now that like once, say, say once we pass and like there's no one left that I'm really remembers stay here that. forever. You know, <laughs> you're like, like the, you're going to have people that, you know, nobody remembers that anymore because nobody was around. It's going to be textbook age stuff. Yeah, I think so. Um, my, I have a sister and she's nine and her name's Maggie and I love Maggie to death. But Maggie um, has always, like, since she was young, she's always had like iPods and iPads. And she recently got a phone. Um, she's in fourth grade, which is a little weird to me, but <laughs> kids, are, kids are whatever. And she's, she's been really hankering on a phone for probably since she was six. Like she needs a phone. And we got her an iPod, and we're like, hey, you can do iPod stuff and make musically. And she's like, no, I want a phone. And then she got a phone. But why, why do you need a phone when you're in fourth grade? Like, we, we Well, when you pay some bills, like I said in our previous <laughs> episodes, when you pay some bills, then you can get phones. But I also think, I don't think it's just about that. I think uh, we need to make sure that our children and everybody know how to behave, how those other skills that a phone can't teach you. Yeah. You yeah. know, and that's just real talk, like, Come on, we have to actually find out who the adult is, who the parent is, and let them know that, hey. Like, remember that it's still important to build it's these It's still important skills to build technology. social skills. Yeah, because I, I know what you mean. I have a, a, a cousin, and she's like two. And she's always on her mom's phone watching YouTube videos. Yeah. Always, always. That's how they keep her, like, at bay. But social... Um, you two people, they making bank. They making so honestly, bank. honestly, this is even a broader discussion from video games. It's everything. But we'll be right back after this commercial break. As an Army ROTC cadet at Whitewater, you have the opportunity to develop into a great leader while learning and applying the Army values to your everyday life. Within ROTC, you have the chance to travel overseas in the CULP program to train with other militaries, attend many elite Army schools such as Airborne and Combat Diver, and you have the opportunity to attend conferences and guest lectures by some of the Army's top-ranking officers. Our Warhawk cadets participate in many extracurricular activities, Division Three sports, Greek life, intramural sports, among many other team building and community service events. Being a cadet at Whitewater is more than just being part of the Army. It's also about being active members in our community and coming together to form a family atmosphere. Anyone who wants to be a part of something bigger than themselves while developing themselves professionally should consider UW-Whitewater ROTC. To sign up for UW-Whitewater ROTC, go to the fourth floor of McCutcheon Hall to room 417. Step into a place that's alive with creativity. At the University of Wisconsin-Whitewater, our students have a passion for art, graphic design, music, dance, and theater. We're here to help you discover your artistic potential. 
From classic techniques to modern innovations, UW Whitewater is an outstanding place to learn your craft and prepare for your career. So bring your talents and imagination. Come be part of the Warhawk family. Here at UW Whitewater Intramural Sports, we have a motto, a sport for everyone and everyone in a sport. Had a blast. Always have fun at intramurals. Every day we strive to go above and beyond that goal by providing healthy exercise, promoting leisure education, and giving students that competitive atmosphere they are looking for. Yes! 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 It's exciting. Brings me back to those uh, high school days with Friday Night Lights. With our 25 different intramural sports offered, we guarantee that we have a sport for you. Go to our website and find your sport today. Recently, former Vice President Joe Biden has said at an anti-sexual assault rally in Florida, if we were in high school, I would take him behind a gym and beat the blank out of him, referring to Donald Trump and his allegations of grabbing women. President Trump responded with, crazy Joe Biden is trying to act like a tough guy. Actually, he is weak, both mentally and physically, and yet he threatens me for the second time with physical assault. He doesn't know me, but he would go down fast and hard, crying all the way. Don't threaten people, Joe. Guys, this is what we've come to. People squabbling over this in Twitter beefs. Is, is this what we've been reduced to? This is the leader of our country. I can't. I can't. I'm very, not, I can't even go there. I really can't. But yeah. I, the one thing I just want to say is this. We have two influential leaders, right? Suppose it. Uh, we have two leaders. And they have the potential to, you know, do great things, create and great this movements. Is what they're and wasting they're wasting their, their times time on, on going behind a building and being the blank out of them. Clearly, some. And not even physically, they're doing it on a social platform. Right, right. But yeah. at the same time, if like, you if you had an opportunity to, you should have did so, and we wouldn't be in this yeah. predicament right now. But since you didn't, be quiet. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like when in high school, when someone comes to school, be like, "You made you subtweeted me. You made a status about me on Facebook. Let's go!" Like roid yeah. rage, like high school roid rage. And that's exactly what this is. That's all it is. We're comparing sizes. That's what it is. I just think that like there's so much more stuff to do or take care of. Like, hey, Joe Biden. I know you're not doing anything, but why, why are you, why are are you preparing for your election? Why Trump, are you preparing Joe, for Joe your retirement right now? He ain't got nothing else to do. So but like Trump, a, <laughs> Trump, you're running a country. What you I don't think that? so. I don't think not he is. Not only true. is he I running he a country. he got like a thousand monitors in the Oval Office, and he said, what you say? What you not say? Only, not only is he running a country, he is the leader of and the free world. He got a Coca-Cola right here. He is the leader of the free world. As the president of the United States, you have so much power to make so much change. And this is what he's focusing on. But it's amazing how quick he responds back at uh, issues or comments people make. And it's like, damn. It's like, what are you doing? Dang. Like, what you doing? Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm blocked from Trump on Twitter. Um, you he blocked you Oh, yeah, he Twitter? blocked me, for sure. I, how I, does that happen? I DM'd him, and I was like, hey, Trump, look at these okay, photos. Okay, explain to me what you. And then he blocked me. <laughs> What do you think of your what? My waifu? What is that? And it's a long story. Anyway, I'm long talk. story short, okay. I'm blocked from how Trump many, on How many followers does Trump have? A lot. Okay, and he picked you. We're going to look. You we're going to look. Me. We're going to look. We're going to take one second We're going to take one second anyway, here, and we are going to look at how many. I'll just of, keep one little, one little sud so suds. Like, so, like, that, that happened to me, and, yeah, now he's the president. So, the president of the United States has blocked me on Twitter, which is pretty cool. But, like... Don't you think there's better things to do again? Well, than you to know just, what? Like, um, I really think we should consider uh, putting him back on his TV show. I think instead, um, <laughs> because but with real world leaders, so whenever they screw up, you go, "You're fired." Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so his comment to everybody that makes something against him, "I'm gonna get you." 
you know, like, just, it's he's just already that. he's already at in North Korea. So <laughs> I would really like to take a tour of the White House. All right. To move on to our last story of the week. For this week's fun segment, we will be conducting a sense of riddles. Woo. Are you ready for riddles? Yes. Ready for Mary, riddles? Mary okay. Mary had a boat. All right. So the first riddle that we have. All right. Listen carefully, boys. Take away my first letter and I still sound the same. Take away my last letter and I still sound the same. Mm-hmm. Even take away my middle, even take away the letter in the middle and I will still sound the same. I am a five letter word. What am I? <laughs> take away my first letter. Empty. Take away my last letter. Take away my middle letter. Could it be M- Give it up. And then can you give me the second of the first? First letter, second letter, middle letter, all taken away, and the word still sounds the same. It's a five-letter word. Um. Yeah. Yeah? You get it? Oh! Heel. Huh? Heel. No, it's empty. It's empty. Really? First letter, no E. <laughs> no Y. That was a shot. And no P. All right. Next one. I have a head and a tail, but no body. What am I? I have a head and a tail, <laughs> but no body. Is this an animal? I can't tell you that. I don't know. What are you? What am I? Was that shade? No, what am I? Do you know? You give up? You both give up? Mm-hmm. It's a coin. Has a head and a tail, but no body. There you go. I have a riddle. He's blown his mind right now. <laughs> I was thinking of animals like no, no, no stuff. I was really thinking of an animal. A snake, kind of. That's like a big tail attached to a head. Yeah, that's okay. true. That okay. works. Yeah, that, that works. would make sense. All or right. an owl. Ready? <laughs> when the what goes up when rain comes down? My happiness. <laughs> uh. Air. Air? Air. Yeah, it's an right, umbra- it gets humid. In. It's an umbrella. Yeah. Put an umbrella up when the rain comes down. That's so corny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and the last one. When will water stop running downhill? When it gets trapped in a pipe. Water doesn't run. That's actually the answer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it. It's well, not. When the plumber it's even turns worse off your than water that. at the what beginning of, or at the end of the month when you don't pay your your water bill. But <laughs> that, that works too. Oh my God. All right, you ready? Yep. I don't think you're ready. This is gonna make you just throw your papers. I'm telling you now. I guess so. When it gets to the bottom. Oh yeah. See. <laughs> she almost paper cut you right from your eyebrow and to your forehead. And that's all we have this week. Make sure to turn in next week on the Blender 2.0. See you later, guys. Uh-huh.